Hey everyone, welcome back to our little corner of the internet. Today's video actually starts our wedding planning series where we take you through our wedding planning journey and share with you some of our tips and tricks on how we planned our beautiful wedding in Sri Lanka. Also guys, if you stick around until the end of the video, we're going to share with you some tips and important things of note to remember when you're getting married in a Catholic church. Truth be told guys, we didn't think this was a hurdle that we had to go through. Selecting a church was the first thing we actually did when we got engaged before we started the wedding planning process. It was done and dusted and we planned pretty much all the elements of our wedding, the date, the time, venue, everything around this one specific church. We had a very special church. It had a very sentimental value to us. And we really wanted to get married there because both our parents got married there, his sister was married there, and we both received our sacraments in that church in Sri Lanka. So we wanted to keep that tradition alive and we wanted to be married there. And we had our wish, everything was planned. But a couple months before the wedding, we received a call telling us the church was going into construction and we could no longer host our wedding at the church. I was heartbroken. I couldn't even think of what to do next. I couldn't move forward with the planning. I was like, I'm going to cancel the wedding. That's how dramatic I was, as usual. But thankfully, Louis is the one that kind of got me out of it and said, you know what, we have to think on our feet, see what, what we can do to move forward. So a few months before the wedding, we packed our bags and we went to Sri Lanka to find a new church for our wedding. Mm -hmm. So it was definitely a bit of a challenge and we got through it. We found the perfect church and we made it happen. So today's video, we're going to show you how we did that. So come along with us. Good morning, guys. So today is day one of wedding planning. Today we are looking for churches for our wedding because the original church we booked got canceled. We are currently at option number three. Um, so this is this church. So we're going to take a look to see if they have the date available. Um, hopefully they do. If not, the hunt continues. Okay guys, so the last church didn't work out and we called like six other churches while we were there. Everything was a no-go because it was all booked. So this church has the availability, so we're gonna check it out. And hopefully this works out. It's a top contender because it's so beautiful inside and they have the date available, so. <laughs> Honestly, guys, we genuinely did not expect this task to be this difficult because there's hundreds of churches around Colombo and we couldn't find a single one that had our date, that had our date available. And it was crazy because we were so down to the last minute, for, especially for our expectations. It was till last minute and we couldn't find a church. So we had to go outside of Colombo into Nagambo to find a church. But finally, finally, we found a church that met our vision, had our date available and just worked out perfectly. It was better than what we had imagined. Yeah. And not only that, when we, you know, did a save the date card, we actually put the original church in that save the date card. So, so people that close family to us was aware of what church that is because that was like a hint at them saying this is a church. And when that church wasn't available, you know, we were super heartbroken as she mentioned. And, you know, going to Sri Lanka back to back and it's a 20 plus hour flight from, you know, New York or Toronto. 
and going back to back within the same year was even more difficult. Also, the church that we found, uh, Mother of Purification in Negambo, Sri Lanka, um, also had two things that kind of describes myself and Stapi. Um, you know, she always wanted a church with nice marbling, white church that's, that's pure and, and clean and clear, right? And then I always wanted something so like old and Ooh, organic sorry. and more rustic. More rustic, yeah. So the church that we found actually had both, uh, best of both worlds basically. So the roof was um, this dark oak um, wood, which is the only church in Sri Lanka that has a um, wooden ceiling. And then the altar and everything else was marble, just like how she always wanted. So it was the perfect church for us. Um, and we first sight, we, we looked at the church, we both fell in love with the church and we said, this is it, we're good to go. So that was our journey and how we found our perfect church in Sri Lanka to get married in. And honestly, guys, it couldn't have worked out better. The initial church we were going to get married in was about 30 to 40 minutes away from our actual venue. But because we were so determined with the church, we didn't even think of an alternative. But this church was actually less than 10 minutes away from our venue, which worked out so much better. It was a clear sign. It was, it was just icing on top. That it was, was a cherry on the cake. Yes. yes. <laughs> it all came together so beautifully. So sometimes when plan A, A doesn't work out, just have faith in plan B, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is something I or really have, can't do. Or have plan C, D, and <laughs> so on and so forth. And that's what wedding planning is, right? It's There's always going to be interruptions. There's going to be hurdles. And you just have to keep moving with the wind. And at the end of the day, you get to marry the love of your life. And that's all that matters. That's true. <laughs> Okay, so you made it to the end of the video. So we're gonna share with you some of the lessons and tips that we really took away from planning our wedding. Mm -hmm. If you are planning a Catholic wedding, please start early. It is extremely difficult to get a date in a Catholic church. So if you have a specific time frame when you wanna get married, start early, call your church first. That is the first and foremost thing you should do before you book any of the other vendors your venues or anything else. Earlier so, the better. Yes, and there's, and we're speaking specifically to a Catholic church because that's that was our experience. Um, there's also a lot of paperwork to be done to be married in a Catholic church because it is a sacrament, so they do take it very seriously. And in our case, because I was from Toronto, he was from New York, we're getting married in a whole other country in Sri Lanka. It was, the process was a lot more tedious. I would say it took us about six to seven months to get mm -hmm. all of our paperwork in order. Uh, we had to complete a marriage course. Mm -hmm. um, thankfully, we usually done in person, but thankfully post COVID era, we were able to complete the course online, which worked out great for us because we were not living in the same country. So the virtual one- Yeah, otherwise the option would have been like, either she take off from work and staying with me for like two, three weeks just to do that course, or I have to go to her and that was not gonna work out either. Yeah, so that was a big one. I And the course is not offered like, you know, whenever you want, it's only twice or three mm -hmm. times in a year. So you have to be, which is why you have to plan early so you can kind of capture that time frame when you can complete the course. And we had to submit a lot of documents to be sent from one church to another and then approved through the Archdiocese in Sri Lanka, I believe. Mm -hmm. So the paperwork alone took a very long time. And my priest had to interview him, me, um, to kind of determine that we are going into this marriage willingly, freely, and we are going in it for the right reasons. Another thing I would say is check for like their sound system or their requirements when it comes to AV. Because we were having a live choir, um, not all churches can accommodate that request. So you need to kind of have that conversation ahead of time with your church before you book to make sure that's something they can allow. Um, because sometimes, you know, when you have live musicians, 
they need to be bringing in their own equipment will the church allow that or do they have to use their equipment mm -hmm. so there's a lot of conversation that needs to be had and for the videographers and the photographers as well uh, they need to know in advance um, what kind of systems that the church have or if you're you know booking a third vendor uh, you know to come to the church to do all the the live sounds uh, they need to know who they are and they need to basically coordinate coordinate with each other so yeah. do that early as well and just piggybacking off of what he said in terms of your photographer videographer make sure to have the conversation with your lead priest regarding their parameters of photography and videography are they allowed to come up to the altar can there only be one cameraman in the church can there be like videography during your ceremony etc these are some of the conversations you want to have ahead of time because it is your special day. I'm sure you want it documented, but when it comes to a sacred space like a church or a Catholic uh, church, they do have some parameters and restrictions and you want to have that conversation uh, up front so you can kind of go into it with that expectation. Okay, I'm going to have this moment on camera or I'm not going to have that moment on camera and be okay with that and not be walking into any surprise on the day of your wedding. If you have a new bride, please introduce your new bride. <laughs> to the priest and uh, have an interview with him at least if even if it's the, the day before um, you know I missed to do that and you know uh, I got called out in the middle of the mass and it was pretty funny and you know thank God if you know I know him uh, my entire life uh, his name is our uh, father Valeviter and uh, the nicest guy in the world and he actually made our mass even more entertaining because he was just busting my chops the entire mass so uh yeah so do an interview with your priest uh it's going to build your relationship because this is going to be the most important day of your life it's just going to make things feel more comfortable because you're going to be very nervous uh in the front at the altar so if you don't know who the priest is or if you've never spoken to this person uh, trust me, it'll make things a million times better. I wish I did it, uh, but, so but learn from us. Yeah, learn from us. Just make sure you do an interview with your priest. Yes. Um, and another thing I think we kind of touched on it earlier is understanding and estimating your travel time between your venue and your ceremony space. So if it's your church to your uh, reception venue like especially in Sri Lanka with traffic and stuff getting from one place it could say 10 minutes on Google but it could end up taking like 30 to 40 minutes right thankfully our church and venue ended up being closer but when you are booking ceremony space separately and your reception space just to keep that in mind so you can accommodate for that travel time for yourself and also for your guests and another important important part for me was decor I had a certain vision of what I wanted my church to look like on my wedding day and I did not want to budge on decor. I wanted a glass aisle to walk down and I wanted like a floral aisleway. But all this, in order for you to have your vision come to life, you need to have a conversation with your church regarding setup time. Some church only gives you like, you know, an hour. Sometimes they give you 30 minutes, depending on mass times. So please make sure you have that conversation up front so you can have the right timelines and coordinate with your decor company to have your vision come to life. Because if, you know, sometimes if you really want a vision, but you don't have the time, it just can't come together and you have to sacrifice one or the other. And thankfully, we were so fortunate enough that the church didn't have anything else booked that day. So my team had an entire day to set up for our wedding. And there was no other time con constraints when it came to removal either. So they were very, very flexible, which helped us out a lot. So that was all of our knowledge, our tips, and everything that we kind of learned and the knowledge that we want to pass on for anyone that is planning to you know have their wedding in Sri Lanka or just planning their Catholic wedding. Thank you so much for joining us here today guys. I hope this video was really helpful for you. If you like this video please hit that like, thumbs up button and subscribe to our channel to see more of us.
Like we said, this is episode one of our planning series. We'll definitely be releasing a lot more content in the upcoming weeks. So if you like what you see, please hit that subscribe button and give it a thumbs up. And of course, leave some comments below if you have any questions. Until next time.